here we are. So we humans have ways of understanding each other, of grasping what each other mean, that psychologists call having a theory of mind. So mm -hmm. I have some sense that, you know, it's not just that I have a mind, you have a mind too. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, I have a sort of an understanding of your mind, of what you're thinking of where you're going next. That's how we're able to have a conversation to a considerable degree. And that's believed to be a uniquely human character. And psychologists have studied our closest relatives, chimpanzees, bonobos, gorillas, the other great apes. They can't find much, if any, evidence that other great apes think in that sort of a way. Then, what about dogs? Dogs actually, pet dogs, can succeed on the kinds of simple tests that were developed for use with chimpanzees to try and gauge whether they have any inkling of theory of mind. This all sounds rather abstract. I can make it concrete. It's, it's really quite simple. The most widely used test to look at whether an animal has a theory of mind was simply to point and to see whether the animal would go where you pointed. And if you do this with your chimpanzee, or your bonobo, or your gorilla, or your orangutan, you, they'll just like throw up their hands like, I don't know what he's on about. But if you do it with your dog, the chances are that most of the time, most people's pet dogs will go and investigate where they point. Now, this was just one, I, it's just the simplest and most easy to explain test that's been used of this type. Brian Hare was actually working with chimpanzees and he did this test himself with the chimps. They couldn't understand what he was doing. He went home to his family dog. You know, he was a very young guy at the, guy, at the time, a graduate student. He went home to his family dog. He tries this on his dog and his dog, ka goes where he points. Adam Nicolosi out in Budapest is doing the same kind of thing with people's pet dogs. And he finds, yeah, the dogs will go where you point. And so this led them to conclude that dogs, during the process of domestication, something had changed in their brain, something had evolved that gave them a more human-like form of theory of mind understanding than any other animal that had ever been tested. Hmm. And specifically, they also, both of them, tested wolves, and the wolves did not go where they pointed. So this convinced them that this was a derived characteristic. This was something that had evolved in the journey that some dogs took from wolf to modern dog. And so, I'm, as I say, I, so that's, I so that's this, where yeah. where you you kind of came into the field at right. this at this time. Yeah, you were mm -hmm. you were interested in it. You wanted to know more. You and and uh, went about right. figuring out how and to I test would, it. We started out testing dogs for ourselves. This was Monique Udell, who was my first graduate student working on this. She's now a professor at Oregon State, uh, yes, Oregon State University. And we tested dogs. And yeah, it's completely true. Most people's pet dogs go where you point. Yeah, absolutely. They're good at it. But then we got contact from an outfit in Indiana who have been hand rearing wolves since 1974. So they're very good. They're beautifully hand reared wolves. Wolf Park in Indiana. And obviously it's very interesting to test wolves for yourself. And I still remember when we went out there, as it happens, it was my birthday. I forget which birthday, but it was my birthday. And um, the people out there contacted us because they'd been reading the literature, reading what Brian Hare and Adam McClosey were saying about how wolves wouldn't go where you point. And it didn't ring true for them but they weren't themselves scientists. So they, they contacted us to see if we were interested to come out and carry out some tests on their animals. And so we did this and actually their wolves were better at this than most people's pet dogs. The wolves at Wolf Park were really, really good at this. In the meantime, Adam McClosey in Budapest has tested some more wolves and he's come around to our point of view on this. He says, yes, wolves can do it, actually. Brian Hare, I believe, still insists that wolves cannot, even though other people have. <laughs> in fact, there's now, there's now people have tested all sorts of different animals on this simple test. Oh and man, I, I love a good, I love a good scientist uh, um, 
uh, being called out on my show. That's what I, <laughs> get, a, get a beef going. I should have had you both on. Um, well, you can get I, him, get I, him on before he says. I, I, haven't, I haven't spoken to him for a long time. What with the I, pandemic and so on? It'd be interesting yeah, to know yeah. where he stands now. But yeah. um, I've come around to the view that what make what matters if an animal is going to so now there are papers on thirty eight different species of animal that under certain circumstances will follow a human pointing gesture, and the crucial thing is it's not about what species the animal is, or whether it's a domesticated species or a wild species. What matters is that individual animal's experience of life. If that animal was hand reared by human beings from a very early age and has gone on through its life to interact with people, especially if people give the animal food with their hands, well, then you have an animal that's relaxed around people, that looks to people for its social relationships, that looks to people for food and other things that matter in its life, and that is used to paying attention to where the human's hand goes. Mm. And if that's the animal's life, then it doesn't matter whether it's a wolf or we tested bats, hand-reared bats, doesn't matter what species the animal is, if it's had those right circumstances of life. And meanwhile, flip it over, if you get dogs, every dog is a member of a domesticated species, but if that individual dog has not had rich relationships with human beings, has not had the experience that the movement of people's limbs matters for that animal's survival and food and goodness knows what, well, those dogs do not follow human pointing gestures. It's not about what species you come from, domesticated, wild, whatever. It's about you, the individual animal that we're testing today. What kind of a life around people have you had? And if your life has been full of people doing things and people are part of your life, you'll probably follow a human pointing gesture. And meanwhile, if not, then not. 